I don't even need to know your name. I need to know your vision. vision. I call you by your vision. Right? This is good. And if you basically can share your vision enough. This is Blair Durham with Black Wall Street Today, your media hub for all things black entrepreneurship, politics, news, and events in Hampton Roads and beyond. When I say black, y'all say Wall Street. Black. Wall Street. Black Wall Street. When I say black, y'all say Wall Street. Black. Black. Good afternoon and welcome to this edition of Black Wall Street Today. I am your host, Blair Durham, and I bring greetings. Switching gears today, we move into part one of a three-part focus on economic development. Although there's no standard process for economic development, people would generally agree that when we improve our social, our political, and our economic plight, we have engaged in some level of economic development. One of the primary tenets of this show is a core belief that entrepreneurship its practice and its skill set is the most viable opportunity, uh, more so than even reparations, to advance the black community. Indeed, success in entrepreneurship impacts government and law, technology and industry, and every sphere of our world. Improving upon basic financial literacy concepts, embracing the stock market, and capturing business from the government, as discussed in our most recent episode, uh, featuring Chuck DeBeau, Vice President of the National Black Chamber of Commerce, as well as J.R. Fenwick, CEO of Flip That Stock, are all avenues for sustain- sustainable wealth and creating those concepts in our community. Hashtag our numbers matter. And so to further that discussion, we actually invite Chief Economics Professor Oliver Jones of the Hampton University School of Business. How are you today? I'm well. How are you? I am doing awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Anytime. Uh, you're talking well. You're talking to me. So uh, my objective is, is to is to educate, um, to inform, and to support the infrastructure of building wealth in, in our communities. So I'm happy to be here. I love it. I was just going to say, tell us a little bit about yourself. How is it that you've oh, sort I'm, of arrived at this place? You bet. Um, you will probably quickly detect that there's a Jamaican accent in there somewhere. Um, I, I hear that. Uh, I've, I've first arrived uh, in the United States. I did my undergrad at Prairie View a and in Texas um, uh, since 94, but I just can't shake the accent. And I discovered I don't need to shake the accent. Right? Um, it's uh, good. It the, works. The, 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 um, the partnership between um, Hampton alums and Jamaicans have gone back all the way from the turn of the century. Um, with Marcus Garvey and um, Booker T. Washington, um, you know, collaborating to to determine how best to build wealth among um, in the African American community. Yes. Um, you know, for folks who don't know, Marcus Garvey is from Jamaica. He's actually one of our seven national leaders in Jamaica. Um, subsequently, after basically getting kicked out of the United States, right. but prior to that, um, while Marcus Garvey was here, um, he owned um, in the tw- in the nineteen. 19- 10s and 20s, shipping lines, he owns restaurants, he owns newspapers in New York, owned right. in the community. A serial entrepreneur. Right? Serial entrepreneur. Yeah. And um, and his philosophy was that, which um, probably was a little bit too radical um, in that time, but... Um, but but the whole philosophy of of, of wealth and ownership of uh, is what basically give power and ultimately to uh, so I love your introduction um, that you alluded to um, you know you know the need to actually own not j- it's one thing to just be an entrepreneur and make money on the the income statement part but on the balance sheet that's own you know mm. own the wealth right own the banks that give you the money to 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 to, to develop the entrepreneurship. Um, so so um, that's where my background is from. My, my first introduction to ownership of business came when I was a teenager in Jamaica. Um, my dad was, uh, um, uh, he never went to college, right? But he went to train in school and he worked for one of the big bauxite companies um, in Jamaica, aluminum, black bauxite um, uh, companies like um, Alcoa and Alcan. You know, the aluminum foils you make today, that's big in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. And conflict of interest um, and drove him to, to have myself and my brother, us both teenagers, um, to, to, to take over the engineering firm that he created. And from ever since then, we were hiring, you know, folks at um, 10 age, you know, you know you're, uh, a lot of older folks than we are um, and owning stuff. Um, so, uh, you know, over the years, I've... I've um, Created um, over ten companies, um, international with international aspects to it, from 
uh, from the energy, from the tech side um, to engineering side. Um, however, I'm not an engineer, right? It's 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 I, I come from the, the the space of business. Um, my brother is more the one that's on the engineering side. My my objective always is to to make money for the companies. Um, I got, but I was also kind of you know sharp on the uh, on the um, academic side too, and so education was still big in my space. I love it. You're listening to Black Wall Street today with Blair Durham. We are talking with. Professor Oliver Jones of the Hampton University School of Business. Dr. Jones, you've created what is now the Center for Applied Economics and Entrepreneurship. Is yes. that right? Yes. Tell us about the program. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, part, and so part of the story that basically finally got me here for, um, to, um, to Hampton University was, was a need where, where I was doing consulting um, for several governments through the Caribbean. Okay. Um, and I noticed that there wasn't there wasn't any you know you know African Americans or even Caribbean you know you know Americans that were basically in those rooms in that space, and um, you know I felt like I needed to do something about this, and and so so there was my first push to to um, you know you know to approach Hampton University. I lived in this area, mm-hmm. um, you know of course my my wife um, who. I met at Prairie View 20 years ago. Um, you know, she she didn't want to go back to Texas, so you know, hey, you know, you know, Hampton is the one that we approached for the business school. Um, interesting story. When I got in, I met um, the dean at, at the time, Dean Cradle, okay. um, in the business school, and he was my head of accounting in Prairie View undergrad. Wow! And it's like, wait a second, I know you from then. <laughs> you were teaching economics when you were in the class doing economics. Um, you know, you know, you're now, you know. Uh, you know, at, at this point, I've had, um, I did my MBA at Syracuse. I've, I've done um, I, um, I had a doctorate um, degree in Argus University, and I went back for a global energy program at Harvard Business School, right? So, and I've done the corporate space and do all of that stuff and called myself retired at, at 2010. <laughs> right, so 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 I retired from corporate, but started to say, okay, now get back to what my dad was talking about. Um, and so, but I wanted to include what I'm doing and um, an exposure to students. Um, this whole journey that I've been on, mm-hmm. uh, and so so hence my approach to Dean Cradle. Of course, um, if anybody knows um, the good old Dean Cradle in the School of Business, he can he can convince you to do anything. So he convinced me to stay around for one semester, um, come inside and, and immerse myself in the classroom, get to know the students and, um, you know, you know, uh, get a shot at, at doing what I'm proposing to do. Three and a half years later, I'm still here I'm doing it because I get so much um, um, uh, um, joy from doing it. Um, when I came to the, in the classroom, um, I took over um, quickly all, all, all of the senior economic programs okay. and uh, one or two entrepreneurship programs. Um, and you realize that um, in order for, for, for me to get these students to do, you know, the, the millennials, um, they, you know, you're not going to teach them some things out of some book and later they go do it. You actually have to use applied basis to actually do this. And if we're going to basically formulate um, a way that students are going to be um, exercising the development of wealth and entrep- um, to entrepreneurship and transform communities at the same time. It has to be done while they're actually learning. So, Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to Black Wall Street today. We're here with Chief Professor of the Economics Department at Hampton University, Dr. Oliver Jones. We're having a fantastic conversation about economic development and the programs that he's created here at the School of Business for entrepreneurship students. Go yes. right ahead, sir. Awesome. And, and um, you know, it, it, we, you know, there were some quite some fortune over the last two years, too. Um, because I then I um, I encountered some of um, the Hampton alums who had were passionate about the space too. Um, we also recognize that there is an opportunity if we want to leave, uh, fast forward this um, this journey um, of of finding um, research and innovation and and technologies that are already existing um, and that there are shell technologies not being used today mm-hmm. and put it in these entrepreneurs' hands who have the vision to actually execute this in the community. Um, and so we, we basically deliberately went after finding a relationship that has access to NASA technologies. NASA has thousands of technologies being developed over time, patented technologies being used for stuff for outer space. Mm-hmm. Um, and if we have visionaries here in the classroom 
who basically know their situation, where they're coming from or have relationships better than you and I have. Um, what better way um, to base, attach some of the technologies to, to, to address some of the issues that they are aware of and make it their vision and their journey to, to entrepreneurship? Uh, so, Go right ahead. No, so, I was just so, going to say, I know a little bit later in the show, we're going to hear from yes, some yes, of the winning of, students. It, indeed, that, indeed. Yeah. And so so, so we have um, a, a former alum, um, um, Von Nkosi. Um, he, he graduated from the architecture program here. Um, he is living in Atlanta. He has his architectural firm. And uh, when when Katrina happened in New Orleans, he went to New Orleans and created the Institute for Local Innovations. Um, and through that journey, trying to basically do a restructuring in New Orleans, mm-hmm. he, his connections, um, um, you know, intercept with uh, NASA and and um, NASA Goddard uh, out of Maryland um, to get access to some technologies and to start, um, um, you know, case competition for for minority students across um, on the country from HBCUs, MSIs, um, which is minority serving institutions, um, to get these students. Um, into a process of doing such. Um, the, the, the story, it was interesting because I was inside trying to, you know, culture this um, the first year. And of course, you, you know, naturally, you know, folks in engineer school say, who's this business guy? And talking engineering and talking STEM to, you know, you know, and all that stuff was going. Um, I mean, I think it's amazing because... You, you're practicing this thing right. on so many different levels. You've right. got an investment fund you've created. Yeah. Oh, so yes. when you say access to capital, when you say empowering community, you don't just mean nah. you know, from any one particular standpoint. Nah. You've kind of got that whole... The, the whole... Completing the ecosystem. If you don't own the ecosystem, somebody else is and somebody else is getting the power. So mm-hmm. even when we go into communities and we say, okay, we have the idea, uh, we now are starting to do transformation um, let's say we basically say, okay, we're going to do development, real estate development on a block. Mm-hmm. Um, we identify how we don't, we've set the projects up. We look at the revenue stream. What's the first thing we do? We beeline into a bank mm. uh, or, 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 or uh, um, our investor. And they basically want 80% of the project. So our ownership They, is they want the decision making process. We so- just gave away our own concept, everything to 80%. This is good. This is Black Wall Street Today. I'm your host, Blair Durham, and we're sitting with Professor Oliver Jones. He's the chief economics professor uh, here at Hampton University, having a fantastic conversation again about economic development and various initiatives to empower the black community. Talk to us more about your investment fund, how that got underway and and so forth. Sure. Uh, um, The the investment fund, my, my process that I've done over time and I kind of got it from my my approach to uh, my PhD research, um, which is is I am I am I am known for pursuing. Once I basically have a vision about um, what I want, I pursue. And and no for me is usually kind of get me excited because I mm-hmm. you know you know um, a bit of a challenge. Yeah, a challenge for one. But but the secret is is like my biggest asset is knowledge. And, and so knowledge is a new currency. It's, it's, it's not money. So even if I go into a process and, and it seemed like I, you know, um, there was a big no and it didn't succeed, I guarantee you I took something away from that process sure. and build and build and build, build towards this. So it was the case when I, I started to go into some of these major projects across the Caribbean, solar, energy, renewable, hydro, and I'm sitting with guys who are billionaires. Guess what? I, I also my LinkedIn is also now connected with a billionaire who sit in the room. There it is. And I'm like, tell me, how did you become a billionaire? Mm-hmm. So, 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 so the process of knowing um, uh, for me is 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 being uh, the biggest secret of stuff. Um, I knew that in the Caribbean there's been challenges, um, particularly on energy, because you know I don't know if you know this, but outside of Trinidad we don't we don't own our own oil source so all of that stuff 100% has to be imported in and so we're always dependent on other people for for that stuff Um, we need to basically develop our renewable space because we have plenty of sunshine across the Caribbean and but the capital that is needed to do it up front is is huge so if you don't have your own capital source um, you know you're running in a cycle and again same situation I'm going back to the guys who have the money and they take over the projects and they mm-hmm. make decisions and they make money right. right and then now not only that but um, we don't own anything 
And I, I also noticed that in Jamaica, when I look at the energy system, the whole energy ecosystem in Jamaica, it's not owned by Jamaicans. It's owned by investment funds and some, some, some from the Japanese, South Korea, um, and some folks in New York. <laughs> and wow. so I'm like, okay, this is a problem. I need to now not only look at a solution for, for that, but I need to understand the, the, you know, how you get the capital in order to do this. How do you structure an international fund mm-hmm. where you can access capital not only in the United States, but is in, in from from Asia and from from different um, areas in the world. Structuring an international fund, right? And, and so, so I, I started that pursuit. The first time, the first time I did, the first time I did, um, um, you know, you know, I I learned how to because now I have knowledge. Yeah. Um, but I went back. I remember I walked into a bank in the Bahamas. Nassau Bahamas is one of the areas that that holds some of these big bank and trusts. Um, and they're like, okay, um, first of all, how do you know this? Why are you here? Mm-hmm. Is your network a hundred million or more? Because you really should be talking about this. You know, right. Essentially, right. kind of get kind of, kind of shoot away. Mm-hmm. Um, I said, okay, um, but but I know now where to go and to have that done. Um, so we, we continue to say, okay, I can't get into the front door. We're going to basically start to build a relationship with some of those guys who have fun already out of Singapore um, because I show the value on what I have on the other side. So so every time I'm setting up a deal, I'm always coming into a deal, um, not looking to, to create my own wealth, but understanding how what you want and the value on your side. Mm-hmm. And by creating that value, I create value um, through that relationship. And so, so, so of course, the knowledge sharing and, the, yeah, and what I want to do, and you know, some of those Singaporeans actually started to give me access to, to stuff in the Caribbean to set up funds to do international um, business uh, there. So, so that's the start of basically creating that fund. Um, and if you just tuned in, ladies and gentlemen, we are sitting with Professor Oliver Jones uh, of the Hampton University Center for Applied Economics and Entrepreneurship, where he is the chief economics professor. This is Black Wall Street Today. I'm Blair. Dur- um, we're learning about how to start an international fund so that you can own both sides. Both sides, right? Yeah, both sides. Um, so now, uh, what I've done now is 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 then say, okay, I'm going to basically use this as a basis to come back in um, to frame what is needed for when we start to commu- um, you know, the community entrepreneurs mm-hmm. here, because the goal is not my 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 vision. And my purpose that I that God's give me is not to basically have all the money in the world, but to be a conduit for visionaries to execute their vision, providing resource and access. Providing resource and access is knowledge, and then the resource after knowledge to actually make it happen. And and so so we've been on a journey. I shared um, with the, the the young man from. Um, the former alum, the alumni from uh, uh, Hampton University, mm-hmm. which we've basically partnered through this journey, and one of the NASA is taking note of it too, because not only are we have we gone and won a national competition as bringing Hampton students, the the visionaries, um, um, to do this, and they're on their journey to do it, but we basically also set the platform to do it. So now we basically are engaging with directors for economic development in the different communities, mm-hmm. understanding what's needed doing designs and bringing in some of those technologies, looking to do modeling and simulation so students here can actually pull and be facilitating and, and, and learn this journey while we basically do this technology transfer. So it's because if you're not doing it the whole way, we're just sharing information, we're talking. And we we repeat the same cycle we're seeing from the 70s where we're owning less and less and less wealth um, than we have as a community. So 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 it's a, it's a process of hand-holding but it starts with the vision. And, and so my students that come into my class, I say, in fact, um, they'll, they're, they're, my, my famous um, phrase now for them is like, I don't even need to know your name. I need to know your vision. vision. I call you by your vision. Right? This is good. And if you basically can share your vision enough, mm-hmm. we can turn it into what the purpose is for. Mm-hmm. And once I lay that, that groundwork, I guarantee we can match it with some technology to announce it to make it happen. Wow. So, this so is great, Dr. Jones. I'm excited. I know that when we come back from the break, we're going to 
hear from a couple of your students, sure. right? So yes. we get to see if this is yeah, working. Yes. Yeah. I've got a feeling that it's working, oh, yeah. <laughs> but I'm excited. Working. When we get back, more about a couple of SBA loan programs that I bet you may not have been aware of, and we'll hear from Dr. Jones' students. Good afternoon and welcome back to this edition of Black Wall Street Today. I am your host, Blair Durham, and it is time for hashtag add this to the list. We are continuing the conversation about business resources. And according to Black Enterprise Online, the Small Business Administration continues to be a viable business lender. The SBA's 7A loan program, which is the agency's primary and most common lending program, approved 696 loans for just over $166.7 million for African-American American women businesses in 2018 alone, actually up 3%. Uh, businesses can use those loans to um, for everything from working capital to land acquisition or even just purchasing equipment. In addition, the SBA approved 34 loans for right around $16.6 million for Black-owned women businesses, slightly down from 36 loans, under the agency's 504 loan program. That program offers businesses long-term fixed-rate financing that can be used for such purposes as, again, buying land and existing buying or upgrading facilities. So we're back with our guest for today, Dr. Oliver Jones, and continuing the dialogue about economic development. And now we're here with two of his students that are going to introduce themselves, talk a little bit about how they have benefited from the Center for Applied Economics and Entrepreneurship. Who do we have with us? Um, Andrew Graham, a senior economics major. Andrew, awesome. And who else do we have with us? Hello, I'm Alexis Darko, a third year, five year MBA student here at Hampton University. Wonderful, wonderful. Welcome to the show. And so I understand that you both recently com- competed in a national competition. Can you talk about what that competition was and what that experience was like? Yes, yes, we can. Um, Dr. Jones, you know, has been really a pioneer with this whole um, program. So, the relationship between NASA, ILI, and Hampton University is, was set up this technology transfer between um, NASA and, and students, any student who wants to take place. Um, you can use these technologies. They give you a list of technologies that you have access to. Okay. You know, you select from those technologies, and you build a business plan around those technologies. Um, you present on that, and they decide, you know, where you rank, who's the best, what, which ones are easily, easily um, ready, ready to go to market, basically, easily uh, accessible. Um, and we all competed on that. We uh, got the chance to be finalists this year. Uh, we did go last year as well. Hampton yeah, University good. placed first last year as well. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're keeping that tradition going strong. We want to keep that, um, keep a system of people going to these case competitions and really, you know, getting access to this knowledge because there is a knowledge deficit um, between, you know, within the, the community, the black community and the white community. So we need to shorten that gap and lessen that gap. We need to fill that knowledge gap, and that's what we're doing with this club. Fantastic. I do want to open up the phone lines, 757-727-5711. If you have a question for either of these two students or for Dr. Jones, we invite you to call in. Again, that's 757-727-5711. The phone lines are open. Go ahead. Tell us a little bit about your experience, Alexis. Um, My experience this year was a little different. Last year, I got to have a behind-the-scenes look at what went on with NASA and ILI, but this year, I was able to actually apply and become a finalist. For my take this year, I had a love for um, technology, and I believe that as millennials, we need to understand that technology is in our hands every day. Um, A post by the Huffington Post said that we touch our phones approximately 45 times a day. So as millennials, we need to understand that we're touching these million-dollar devices and we're not figuring out how we can help them, how we can fix them, how we can create better and faster solutions for them. So that was one thing that I wanted to make sure that was on my radar and that I was staying educated, informed, and flexible about how to be involved in that. I'm just so proud over here. So (laughs) tell us a little bit about the technology that you worked with. The technology that I worked with this semester was actually involving two different NASA technologies. And one thing that I want to make sure that everyone knows is NASA is literally giving you access to technologies that are everywhere in the world with NASA's corporations and that have abilities to do things beyond what our minds can see and what the future will see in um, return. I think that NASA's application to this is beautiful because it's so standard and so Um, various that you can really make it your own and nowadays being your own person being able to put your own spin on technology is very important because we have 
people who are trying to kind of do the same thing. But if we make sure that we're taking these opportunities to change and do what we want to do, we all are unique and we'll have a different spin on it. Awesome. I couldn't agree with you more. Again, this is Black Wall Street Today. I'm your host, Blair Durham. We're here with some students from Hampton University who recently won a national entrepreneurship competition that was put on through a relationship with NASA. So very exciting. The phone lines are open, 757-727-5711 if you have questions. Tell us a little bit about the entrepreneurship side of of what you participated in. Was there money is my first question. (laughs) I believe that the money is in the tech. The money is in the opportunity, and that is in building those relationships, becoming the forefront of it, putting yourself in the door of the opportunity. But I think that in the value of it, it's really immeasurable, and it's something that that we need to see that it's not necessarily our focus on the monetary funds. Our focus is on the change that the world needs as young people being pushed in. I myself would consider myself a serial entrepreneur because my passions range from healthy skincare to technology and fashion and being able to not only not be afraid to say that I'm interested in tech, I'm interested to know more and I don't know much now, but I will know more. Being able to say that is very um, important. Huge. Andrew, let me ask you really quickly, what was the competition like? Was there any competition? Um, there, there was. There were very, there very much was. The competition was very high. Actually, these are great ideas. Okay. Um, and when you're put, you're, when you're put in these positions to be a part of these competitions, you're pushed. You're put in an un- uncomfortable position that you haven't been in before, and you gain so much from that. The experience is irreplaceable. Um, actually, from the competition last year, uh, students that were involved with that, uh, we created a corporation actually uh, called Generators Inc. Um, four students, four economic students from Hampton University. Uh, we really started getting work done around this spring, you know, really coming together, really cultivating ideas, really finalizing, you know, our product, um, getting something that we, getting a vision that we had. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we pr- were presented opportunities. Like Alexa said, you're presented opportunities. Once you really get in the thick of it, mm-hmm. once you really start putting that effort in, that's when you get these opportunities. So, you know, offering, somebody offering us um, quarter upwards of a quarter million dollars, you know, for Parts of our, part of our company, you know, not even the majority, you know, the, mi- the minority is owning the majority. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not something that's common these days. Mm-hmm. And so we want to make that more common, uh, put your, putting ourselves in these positions. And it's really great, um, whether that's and that was a solar tech that we were uh, specializing in. This year I did a fuel cell technology. Um, I believe Lexus had a battery related technology. So okay. the, ra- the technologies range. They're very, okay. very different. They're very, very different. Um, medical, you know, communication, just a lot mm-hmm. of different mm-hmm. things. And so that's what we want to expose these students to. Um, and it's a really great opportunity. Good. Dr. Jones has something. Yes. So here's a perfect example of where, what I'm talking about wealth. Um, just by having a student registered company and having a NASA patent being transferred over into that company, you the company just moved from, okay, a student with a registration to a NASA patent sitting inside where they own. Right, so imagine that now, like you now are owning a registered company in your name as a student with a with a NASA patent transferred over in it. Um, the, the, the the company last year, as a matter of fact, that well, was an exclusive, meaning that when NASA transfers that, nobody else can touch it. I mean, for a student company, okay, do the valuation now. So 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 so, so when we were talking about not just. Oh, not just sit, you know, get a contract somewhere and go complete a project and get um, a, a loan and, and we're on the struggle and mm-hmm. who is giving mm-hmm. us the loan and we're fighting for that. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, now that we're having an a exclusive patent transferred into a company, people are coming and saying we want to be a part of that and we have money. So you basically flip the script through ownership uh, and, 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 and that's how you basically create wealth. When you basically imagine now, we basically take another step with this solar technology. And by the way, with the solar, if um, for people who are not familiar, um, essentially you see solar panels and sunlight passes through a panel, right? Mm-hmm. Not every sunlight, not a hundred percent of the sunlight that passes through a solar panel is captured. Most of it actually is not. Right. If you capture anywhere between fifteen and twenty percent, you're doing great. Okay. Right. Okay. What NASA patent um, does is, in layman terms, double that capture. So imagine every solar panel that's out there today, mm-hmm. 
And imagine you're going to those same providers of energy and say, hey, I have a technology that double what you're capturing today. Wow. Okay. So, 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 so now you're able to be... It's a different conversation. Yeah, it's a different conversation. Yeah. And, and, and so understanding, seeing these things through the lens of economics mm-hmm. um, and, and applied economics even because I distinguish... Um, economics and the traditional where you get where we all fall where we all, all fall asleep in high yes, school. We're not talking yes. through that. We're talking about through the lens of economics making decision making. Mm-hmm. Now we basically can look at and say, okay, how are we going to do downtown Newport News? And how how are we basically going to basically take control of that development there? And can we actually go now and develop the kind of infrastructure there where we own it, the assets? And where is that money? Do we own that too? Mm, <laughs> so so you, when you create the money and you create the wealth and you generate energy and the money comes back, it's coming back into the same space. Yeah. And so because that money comes back into the same space, folks that you're employing come, are coming from that same space. They're spending money. So guess what? You have stores come into the same space now who want some of that money to circulate to hire more people. Mm-hmm. And that's why you basically create the wealth inside the community. You got to own it. It's good. It's good. One question that comes to mind for me, and again, this is Black Wall Street Today. I'm Blair Durham having a, a wonderful conversation with Dr. Oliver Jones and two of his students here at the Center for Applied Economics and Entrepreneurship about economic development and creating wealth. The thing that came to my mind just then was this is great, right? The the thing that you're doing, I think it's it's awesome. I wonder how it is we get this message aside from, you know, media platforms, right? How do we get it to low and moderate income high schools so that we have a greater population of students that are attracted to this program? You bet. How do we make this accessible? Right. Well, well, well two things. There. The first most basic way uh, you can do this mm-hmm. is simply by the story that you hear now. Well, let's hear right? a story. Yeah, yeah, the story of, of, of the company that is created and the students sure. saw that they created it on the story. Yes. And then and then they become the messenger because folks are relating to them and say, okay, if yes, you in a are sense. doing that, then mm-hmm. I, I can relate. Because one of the challenges that but, we have... But when you agree that a lot of this is over the heads of many... How do we distill this into something that we can take to? So, so, so here's the mo- here's the model. Sure. We basically are now um, looking to do maker space in the <gasps> underserved communities there it is. that are there. And so, and so, not only are we saying, um, you know, Hampton University students with all this knowledge, right? Mm-hmm. But part of that 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 is developing community entrepreneurs that in the community. So when I talk about some of these technologies that we we're talking about, mm-hmm. I just so many dialogues we're having now with the economic development um, directors in these cities right. to say, give me your 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 your. your in fact, as a matter of fact, for for example, in Suffolk, there is this um, one bank in so one building in downtown Suffolk. Metropolitan Church Federal Credit Union. If nothing, no one. Okay. Right? Um, Andrew might remind me the name okay. of it because okay. I'll take them. But but this one now and it's on Washington Street, right? So but simple. but it was it was it was a bank that was black owned that 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 shut down during the Great Depression okay. for the for for creating wealth for the same time frame I'm talking about and it's still standing right mm-hmm. it's called, called the Phoenix Bank of Nansman hmm. I knew it <laughs> right? so it's no longer black owned it's a it's a it's a the framework is there nobody's owning it but we basically are looking at targeting that building Good. for this purpose of what we're talking about you know you know because it has a historic tie mm-hmm. because you know i'm a you know you know i'm i'm always passionate about history mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. um you see I'm, I'm talking about the same time when marcus garvey was the one stuff mm-hmm. it's still there and now they you know the economic directors are saying if you guys want it let's set up um, um that building to facilitate um that you know that that those, those passionate folks who don't have the privilege to be at Hampton University, but want to transform their communities, right? This is great. So, 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 so it's the it's it's the partnerships that are going to happen between these businesses that we're setting up, sure. and the communities that we're going into. So, our objective, which is aligned with Dr. Harvey's, um, to basically uh, address the disparity in underserved communities worldwide. 
Thank you. So because we now are basically having the technology platform to actually do it, mm-hmm. um, and in real time we can be creating this business collaboratively between students and those community entrepreneurs, um, then that's how you basically do that now with Juncture. That's good. So you're creating wealth at the same time. Mm-hmm. So for those that are just tuning in, this is Black Wall Street Today. I am your host, Blair Durham, and just a wonderful dialogue about economic development, creating wealth with the Hampton University's Center for Applied Economics Applied. and Entrepreneurship. That's important, right? An important distinction. Um, we're here with some students who have recently competed and who are already successful entrepreneurs in their own right and just having a dialogue about how we extend entrepreneurship from outside of academia into into, into community right. so i think this is great what else do you have andrew oh as uh, dr jones was talking about this relationship you know getting um this getting getting these relationships cultivated that was sure. actually um Myself and another economic student who graduated last year went out to meet with the economic uh, developer of the city of Suffolk, you know, okay. trying to figure out what we can do within this community to really start changing things, mm-hmm. you know, start mm-hmm. doing things. And also a big thing with our, our whole community development is um, res- resident retention. Okay. Because we all know about gentrification. Right. right. So that's one of our main points we hit on, especially with um, within our, you know, within our club, within our, the, this whole economic development is retaining these important residents, the initial residents. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, um, these are real experiences that were put in by Dr. Jones sure. and the case competitions, you know, the meetings with investors, mm-hmm. um, the highs and lows, building business plan, commercialization plans, mm-hmm. you know, all that is experience that our experiences are going to be, are going to sharpen us really for when we step on, you know, into, into the real world and we're ready to do this for real, for real, because we're doing this right now. Really, we're really doing this right now. Yes. But this is all just practice. This is all really practice and what it is. We're getting a head start mm-hmm. and that's what we're doing. And we're really appreciative for this, this opportunity that Hampton gives to us. You know, we're doing this sure. within Hampton, within sure. our school. It's right here. All mm-hmm. the resources you need to be successful are right here in front of you. You just got to make something out of it. You know? So Andrew, what was it that attracted you to Hampton and to this program in particular? Hampton University, actually, I'm a transfer student. Okay. I uh, played lacrosse um, in New York okay. at St. John's University. Okay. Um, I transferred here um, because my, part of my dad's influence was my sister also. My okay. sister, Jessica Gray, she ended up going to FAMU, you know, the other, another HBCU. But okay, okay. Hampton was, was our first school of interest, which was the first school I ever stepped foot on, ever. I was in seventh grade, so I went with her on a tour. Oh, wow. Um, but I was just attracted to something about this, you know, and then I met Dr. Jones when I came here. And that really, he opened my eyes. You he know, closed to, you. Really, he did. He really did. He, <laughs> he, t- he, he, he took me and he oh, showed wow. me that you need to you need to use what you have. Use the knowledge. And um, the knowledge transfer is really important. And you need to take advantage of this time you have. You know, we don't have a lot of responsibilities as students right now. Mm-hmm. So why can't we do go do this? Why can't we go make these opportunities for ourselves? Yeah. Um, and that's where he really showed to me. Getting involved and going out and, you know, really, you know, setting, laying the groundwork is is something that I'm very invested in for this club and I want to have a longevity of this club. That's really our main focus. And what's the name of the club again? The Economics and Entrepreneurship Club. This is a new club. Economics and Entrepreneurship yeah. Club. I love it. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Great, great. Let me pose the same question to you, Alexis. What was it that attracted you to entrepreneurship and to this program? Well, I think something that's important just in today's day and age, I think in flipping the script and changing the narrative, one thing two things we either have two options of complaining or changing and requiring change is requiring more knowledge and kind of being able to get informed and being able to be uncomfortable in situations and be the quote unquote not smartest in the room and be okay with that until you end up stepping up and I think that one thing that attracted me to Hampton was the possibilities and the potential and when you see potential in something you have to be able to dive into it as a generation that is kind of shying away from making sure our ideas are out there, just as we remember that our votes matter, we need to remember that our ideas matter. The things that are in our heads, the things that we stay up at night and think about matter. And I realized that when I met Dr. Jones, he sees potential in students, and he is a prime example of how a teacher should be in terms of modeling mentorship and real love of knowledge and I think that once we go back to the core of knowledge and the key to being together and having success together is something that I always remembered being here at Hampton. 
I love it. Love it. Love it. I think we've got a caller. Black Wall Street today. This is Blair Durham. Who's there? Carl. Carl, what question do you have? Um, I'm I'm just wondering um, what if there's anything uh, that they're doing. Um, I guess the economic department is doing. I heard it's soulful, but I'm just wondering if there's anything like in Hampton that like directly associated with maybe Hampton, like those communities, Phoebus or anything like that. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Carl, for calling in. We're going to go ahead and answer that question. I'll, I'll disconnect just in case someone else wants to call in. Stay tuned. The question was, um, it's understood that the Center for Applied Entrepreneurship or Applied Economics and Entrepreneurship is looking to partner with the city of Suffolk. But the question is, what could be happening in terms of a relationship with the city of Hampton? Um, yes. And are there are there partnerships yes. there? Yes, uh, um, we are also engaged with the, the economic development um, 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 department in, in Hampton. Okay. Um, and we are also looking at maker spaces both um, um, in Hampton now. We've 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 from the School of Business um, written a couple of grants towards that in okay. you know over the last two months. And we're talking and, about maker spaces that would be available to the general public. Yes. Or, okay. yeah, yes. When when we say maker spaces for the communities, um, the objective is to. To, to, to get those partnerships in. It's, it's, we're not going to the, the, the typical incubator of just, hey, we're there just to incubate ideas. We basically are there to deliberately transform. Mm-hmm. And so so we match the visions that are there, um, find those entrepreneurs in the community um, who want to basically participate with this and, and have it be defined and specific towards an outcome of transformation. Um, it, it will, we, there, there are incubative spaces that are currently in Hampton already um, that if you have an idea, I think that they have, um, I think there's one on Magruder and there's another one somewhere um, else in Hampton. And, and Hampton University of, um, for years had um, one of those opportunities um, in, in Phoebus, which they no longer um, are, are going that direction. Um, you, our goal first is as soon as, you know, when this becomes much, very mature, we can basically then revisit, you know, broadening the scope. Mm-hmm. But for now, as a you know, head of department mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and in a focus, you know, full time, you know, students checking in, there's so much just so much resources in a given day. Now, uh, you know, this is not speaking on behalf of all the strategies from Hampton University. Right, right. Specifically for so this program. Department. It's right. it's outcome. I'm basically driving for outcome and then the students can take it and be, and, and and we create the opportunity. The goal is at the end of the day, the, the technology is on the on this shelf. It gets all the way into the community and transform using a market based strategy. That means that you make a profit doing this. Yes. You and and, 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 at, at, and at the same time you basically transform. I love it. Because because we've gone through some of these cycles of just, hey, having a program and another program mm-hmm. and you have seen the, the results of it. So so we're we're deliberate about this this approach. Again, it, there could be other um, ones that are going on, but 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 we'll we we'll, we yeah, the answer the short answer is Ampton yes is involved. Working on it, good. Well, Dr. Jones, students, this has been a lovely dialogue. I want to thank you so much for your time today. I'd love to have you back sure. soon. Oh, right? absolutely. And just as we're wrapping up, let folks know how they can reach you if you're accessible. I'm sure someone's listening that's already ready to partner. Yes. Are you accessible that way? We are accessible, yes. Um, I mean, of course, you can um, I'm shooting my email at oliver.jones at hamptonyouth.edu. Um, it, it, we are looking for um, the ready um, um, partners um, to actually do this. So, so um, uh, we basically are looking to, to connect, um, and Perfect. the students are looking for that kind of connection too. Perfect. Thanks so much, Dr. Jones. Hey, when we get back from this break, five must-use hashtags for Black entrepreneurs. We'll talk soon. And last thing, as promised, five best hashtags for Black entrepreneurs, according to Black Enterprise. The hashtag Black Entrepreneur is crucial for Black entrepreneurs wanting to attract online attention. It identifies you as an entrepreneur of color, and it helps you connect with the rapidly growing Black entrepreneur community. Be sure to use this hashtag on multiple social networking platforms, including Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. Next, hashtag Pitch Black. 
hashtag pitch black, another must use uh, hashtag for black entrepreneurs wanting to connect with movers and shakers within the black startup and investment sector. Pitch Black refers to black entrepreneurs pitching their startup companies to angel investors and venture capitalists. Add it to your social media post and you'll be surprised at how quickly your entrepreneurial endeavors will be spotted by investors specifically looking for entrepreneurs of color. Next, hashtag support black business is a hashtag that helps introduce your black owned business or potential customers and investors online. Whether you want to attract local customers in your own community or connect with angel investors wanting to support black and Latino entrepreneurs, using the hashtag support black business in your social media posts will help you connect with those interested in supporting your ventures. Number four, hashtag shop black. If you sell products as a black entrepreneur, consider integrating hashtag shop black into your social media strategy. And last but certainly not least is the hashtag black tech for black entrepreneurs building technology companies. That hashtag is essential. Add it to your post on social media and networking sites. And there's a great chance you'll attract investor attention from black focused investors like at Arlen was here. Being social media savvy, as we know, is imperative for black owners wanting to increase their success rate. I want to thank you for tuning in today. Next week's focus will continue the dialogue on economic development. We will host the city of Norfolk. Look forward to talking with you soon. Again, this is Black Wall Street today, and I'm your host, Blair Durham. Stay with us online at Black Wall Street Today on Facebook and Black Wall Street Today on Instagram. And then follow us on Twitter as well at BWS Today. We look forward to talking again next week. Have a wonderful week.